guys, chill out. Just wait for the moving averages to turn up, the 10 and 20. There's no need to trade on the long side. Even if there are setups, when the moving averages are uh, you know, pointing lower. All the big rallies, like the last rally we had back in July to August, right? It's kind of hard to see. Let's do it here. It's easy to see. If you look at the queues, for example, which is one of the weaker of the major indices, but you know, the 10 was turned, the 10 was above the 20 and was trending higher and the 20 was trending higher, right? Now they are in, both in a downtrend. Here, both were trending higher. Here, both were trending higher, trending higher. That's where the big money is. No need to trade on the long side. I wish I uh, took my own advice sometimes, but it's, it's, it's really is as easy as that. There's no need to lose money. For us swing traders, what we are looking for, we want this, this is what we want, right? This is, well, well, let's do this. This is what we want, right? The swing traders, at least on the long side. I don't even care about the short side. I just decided I'm not gonna trade breakdowns. Like, this is what we want. Like this rally here, guys, this rally from mid-October to mid-November, like I nailed some of these crazy things like DVAC and BACT and AMD, right? I, I, I made 50% in, in three week period during this rally, right? This is what we want. This is what we want. This is what we want. Now these were extremely good times, right? This is what we want. We want uptrends that last for a few months. That's where the big money is. You can make money, you know, downtrends too, especially if you're like nailing these, uh, you know, breakdown setups, but there's not that much money in it. So it's just a patience game. We had like one or two good rallies this year. And then there's been some select sectors like energy that worked really wor uh, well early in the year even though they're like Nasdaq and Spice and everything were tanking. Uh, but it's been a very selective market. Yeah, shorting is always uh, difficult. Shorting is super difficult. I just decided instead of, you know, shorting breakdowns, which would have worked. There's been a lot of uh, breakdowns on a lot of stocks this year. Like picture perfect bear flag breakdowns, right? Like Roku here. This is exactly like a flag, but it just turned upside down, right? It's been a lot of, I've just been passing on them. Because I don't want a headache. The problem is when you start focusing on breakdowns, and when, when you start making a lot of money on breakdowns, that's usually when the market turns around, you start getting long setups and you're not quick enough to adapt. And then vice versa again. It just fucks up your head. So I'd rather, you know, do nothing than um, sit there and look for bearish setups. Pause trading? Sure. Wait for an uptrend. Wait, you know, wait until the moving averages, the 10 and 20 moving average have turned up and the 10 is above the 20. There's no need to, you know, look for setups in a market like this. <laughs> when did I enter OIH? Uh, here, when it had a breakout. They stay here. I also entered ERX, but ERX I sold into strength. I didn't want to mess around in this chop market. 
But here I had a perfect breakout, perfect flag breakout. This small, this small cap index is holding up really well. Russell is, um, Russell is strong. It's actually trending higher. The 10 and 20 are both uh, trending higher and 10 is above the 20. This is actually in an uptrend. Sava. It's kind of bouncing off the, this is like textbook stuff. It undercut the rising 50, reclaimed, had a tight, tight like close and then now it's kind of breaking out of this range. Have you missed trading? I've traded. I just haven't streamed, guys. Just because I didn't stream doesn't mean I didn't trade. I'm always watching the markets. Even when I don't trade. Acro had the be most beautiful setup I've seen this year. Too thin for me, but guys, look at this breakout. This is like picture perfect. Look at the follow through. This is what 2020 and early 2021 was in a nutshell. You had a breakout and it kept going for 50, 100, 200%. Imra. Oh yeah, Imra. Yeah, yeah. This one too. Yep. So thin though, super thin. You really need a tiny account to be able to trade these, but look at the follow through. This is what I'm saying. People talk about, oh, do a small account challenge. No, guys, you get it's so much easier to trade a small account. There's so much more opportunity. I wish I had the opportunities. I wish I could trade something like Imra or Acro. I can't. I have to wait for a large mega caps to set up. Or, or some liquid ETFs. Like you guys that have less than say a million in your accounts, you just, you have no excuses guys. There's just, just man, there's so many opportunities, even in a bear market. Have I reached 100 million profits? Yes, I did that in November. My accounts peaked at 105 million in early November last year. Have my scans changed? No. When will the market turn bullish? Who knows? When it happens, the market will tell you. Why I don't have, why, why I don't use my old setup? Because there's less noise. It's so much more nice to just look at a daily chart and I look at it hourly when I need to. It's so much cleaner this way. Like I'm always trying to remove things from my trading. Every every year I try to remove one or two things. How do you prevent biotech gap down? You don't hold biotech, small biotechs into earnings. And also you go to one of these sites that track events. When you 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 look where when data is due. Like if you know data is due during November month, you know you don't buy. It or small biotech. No need to risk it. Just in the past few months, there've been so many 70, 95% breakdown, uh, sorry, gap downs. Have I found it hard? Well, I always find it hard to overtrade. But really like a market that goes, goes down and there's no setups, it's not hard. Like. You just don't do anything. Like there's no setups. There's nothing to do. Like literally nothing to do. There are absolutely no setups for me. There were some great setups in oil gas names and ETFs like two weeks ago. I bought, bought OIH, which I still have. I bought ERX, which I sold into strength. There's no need to sit in front of screens all day, even when there's things to do. Like I'm living life, I'm doing all types of stuff, even when the market is open. I just bring my laptop and everything, anything triggers, I get an alert. There's no need to spend more than a few hours per day in front of the screens.